right, in this video, we are going to cover three more uh, green light castings. Um, if you'll notice, uh, I've done some redecorating here in the background. I've uh, cleared some space on the desk. I've got room for now. My whole collection is, you can only see a little bit of it here, but the entire collection is on the desk now. And um, I figured out that part of the focusing issue I've been having is, was the background here, was this bed frame, was just there was a lot to it, so it was creating a lot of um, a lot of different things for the camera to try to focus on. So we've covered that up, and it looks a little nicer too. Um, but let's get into the cars. So. I've got three more green light castings, and I've been saying this in previous videos how I, I was kind of bummed that there aren't really any fun facts or any kind of interesting little snippets of information on the boxes for green lights. So I took a few minutes on Google and just looked up some specifications for these three cars that we're going to be doing today. So let's get our lift out of the way so we can show you what we're going to be going over first on the list is a 1970 Plymouth Satellite, part of the Estate Wagon series. Um, we did this one, had another one, I talked about it in the, in the video for these, but this is the Black Bandit edition of the same vehicle. Um, I'm personally a very big fan of the lime green. I think that's such a fun color for muscle cars, I really do. Um, so I'm excited to get that one out of the box, definitely. This next one, so all three of these are part of the uh, Estate Wagon series. We have the 55 Chevy Nomad. Um, I've been itching to get this one out of the box because if you look closely, one of the tires is a little messed up in there, so I've been, that's been bothering me, so I want to get in there and fix that up. Um... So we'll get into that one probably maybe second because I'm really excited about that Plymouth. And last we have a 1976 Pontiac Grand Le Mans Safari. Um, we have a, so here's a Johnny Lightning Le Mans. This is a, an earlier model. I think this is a 70, what, 71, 73? I forget. Um, but here is a Le Mans Safari wagon. This is an enormous casting. It is extremely long. This one is up here with the, uh, the, one call it, the Lincoln Continental. So there they are side by side. I think the Lincoln might have the Le Mans beat by a couple centimeters, but not by much. So this is another really big one. Very, very cool. Yeah, 1976, so that's when they were putting catalytic converters the size of trash cans on all the cars and knocking the compression down to try and get them to be a little bit more emissions friendly. And man, we were robbed of horsepower. <laughs> so, we're going to start off, though, in 1970 with the satellite. So we'll get the lift over and get this guy out of the box. Get that set up there. All right, here we go with our 1970 Plymouth Satellite. This is a beautiful, beautiful casting. Um, I, I, I got to admit, I really just love this one uh, so much more than the Black Bandit series. Not that the Black Bandits aren't cool. I just, I, I like color. <laughs> um... So we've got our, what are those, BF Goodriches on there. Looks like some, maybe some American Racing Torque Thrust style wheels. Classic black Mopar hood with the hood pin details painted on there. So you can see those. Very cool. Um, there's the front end. Kind of kind of GTX-y looking. They're probably uh, similar. Maybe a Roadrunner front end. I don't, I'd have to put them all next to each other and compare them. Um, this one, as well, has an opening trunk or a tailgate, if you will. Looks uh, pretty cool if we can... There we go. 
We got our taillight details painted on. Again, wish, kind of wish this had an opening hood. Expose that big V8 in there, but again, that's okay. I think the tailgate coming down is a pretty cool, pretty neat feature. Pretty unique. And so here are some of our quick little facts about this. So uh, after 1969, the Plymouth Satellite was uh, equipped with a 383 cubic inch V8 producing 335 horsepower. Uh, would do 0 to 60 in 7.1 seconds. So for the time, that's that's not bad. I mean, you know what? Honestly, even for today's standards, that's not bad for a big station wagon. 7.1 seconds to 60. And then it would run the quarter mile in 15.4. That's its... Uh, and these are my, you know, 30 seconds on Google Facts. So if you have varying information from other sources, that's all right. Uh, let's take a look at our card here. I like the, uh, the card artwork for the Estate Wagon series. Very neat. Pretty cool picture. Gives you a, kind of a Nevada out in the desert vibe. Long road trips. That kind of feel. And on the back, we have our Series 7 Estate Wagon. So there's the 55 Nomad. We have that. There's a 68 Plymouth Satellite. That's pretty cool. And then, of course, our 70 Plymouth Satellite right here. And there's a 72 Olds Vista Cruiser. Sorry, let's see if I can hold this still here. The 76 Pontiac Grand Le Mans Safari, which is uh, second or third on our list here. And uh, an 84, 84 Ford LTD Crown Victoria Wagon. That's a neat one. Um, I'd definitely be interested in grabbing that 68 satellite, too. It'd be, it'd be cool to see that next to the 70. Let me just do a little comparison. Um, so let's get our card in the box, in the drawer here. Get that stowed away. Okay. We'll do one more look around this one and move on to the 55 Nomad. This is definitely one of my new favorites. I am absolutely in love with this green. And you know what? It's going to look so cool next to its buddy, the green Challenger with the black hood and hood pins. Uh, they're going to look cool next to each other. All right. So we'll get this off of the rack. And you know what? I'm going to stick it right over here with its satellite cousin and the uh, other Challenger. And we'll get that 55 Nomad out of the box and onto the lift in just a second here. Okay, there we go. There is our 55 Chevy Nomad. Um, we'll spin it around here. Does not look like we've got an opening hood. However, we do have uh, real headlight lenses in there. So that's that's a pretty cool feature. I don't think I've seen that on too many of my other castings. Most of my other castings uh, have painted in headlights. So that's pretty unique. I like that a lot. Um, if we come around to this side, there's our blowout. Let's get that fixed real quick. My goodness. Um, <laughs> you de-beaded the thing. Holy crap. Hmm. Okay, I am starting to notice more, uh, more so just green light. There uh, seem to be more blemishes on uh, their castings than some other other manufacturers. But that's okay. Moving right along, we've got some pretty cool tampos. Uh, cat hair. Maybe cat hair on there. Sorry. My kitty's in the room. Yeah, she's helping me. Hi, kitty. Anyway, um, so back to this guy. We've got on the side here, it says uh, Holly Speed Shop. And we've got a Holly graphic there, a hooker graphic. 
I have hooker headers on my Camaro. Uh, way in, way, way, yeah, way in, right? I can't read it. Um, Flotec, I believe that's an exhaust company. Nas and uh, Earl's. I don't know who Earl's is. And then, of course, we've got our little, uh, I can point to it here, little Nomad graphic in the back there. Mm, doesn't look like anything really opens on this casting, but again, that's okay. Um, a lot of really great detail on it anyway. Definitely a big fan of it. I, I, I love 50s cars, the big rolling curvy hoods and fenders and big chrome bumpers and things of that nature. Always look really great. Uh, so we've got our 30 seconds on Google Facts here for the 55 Nomad. The 55 Nomad weighed in at 3,480 pounds, so um, I'm not sure if that's a wet weight, dry weight, or a, or a curb weight. Um, originally equipped with the 235 cubic inch, I imagine, inline six, producing 123 horsepower. Yahoo! So that did 0 to 60 in 14.2 seconds and ran the quarter mile in 19.5. So this could get to 60 miles an hour about a second faster than the satellite could run an entire quarter mile. <laughs> So, not a fast vehicle, but definitely, definitely, definitely a good-looking vehicle. And, I mean, considering this is the Holly Speed Shop Nomad, mm, I don't know if I'd associate those spec specifications with this vehicle. It's probably got some work done to it under the hood. Again, very cool. I like the color. It's kind of like a, a seafoam green, turquoise-ish, with the uh, white roof. Very, uh... Very 50s feel there. Again, we've got what appear to be some maybe American Racing Torque Thrust wheels or Torque Thrust style. There's a couple different ones, but nice classic looking wheels with the white wall tires. Um, all right, so let's get this one off the lift and we'll park it. Park it over there. And we'll get our last car unboxed and up on the lift in just a second here. Look at that Pontiac. That thing is enormously long. It is hanging off the edge of the rack on either end. So this is a really long casting. Very cool, very realistic, keeping it true to 164th scale. This thing is going to dwarf some of the other cars in the collection. But that is true scale, and that's why we appreciate it. Um, no opening hood on this one. At least if it is opening, it does not want to. Um, but we do have an opening tailgate, which I love. So we'll get this thing turned around in just a second here and get a look inside the interior. Um, nice wood grain tampos, I guess, on the side there. I don't know if they were real wood back in 1976, but who knows? Well, maybe you know. Leave a comment. Um, I, I love the color on this. The, the metal flake gold seems to be uh, one of my more favorite colors for these uh, cars. We come around the back here and get a look in the back. So we've got very detailed interior in there. Nice little trailer hitch if we ever want to hook anything up and take it on a road trip. <laughs> Come around here. If you look closely, we can see there's some badging on the fender there. I can't quite make out what that says. Probably, if I had to guess, it says... Uh, maybe... No, I can't read that. I'm not going to guess. Um, 
we've got the card here. I'm not going to spend too much time on this card because uh, all three of these vehicles were from Series 7, so not really much anything different to read on them. But we will tuck that away in the drawer. Keep it there for safekeeping. And then we've got a couple fun facts for the 76 Pontiac. Uh, it says, so this either, I wasn't able to quite figure out uh, years and trim packages. So this either had a 455 or a 400 cubic inch uh, V8. Um, TH400 automatic transmission. Weighing in at 5,300 pounds. So I think our heaviest vehicle here today, this is a... Uh, that's, that's, you know, full-size SUV weight. <laughs> and uh, so being 1976, this thing probably did not make a lot of horsepower either. Can't imagine it was a very fast vehicle, but again, not a big deal when it looks this good. So get that tailgate closed and uh, just can get a look at it like that. Yeah, these just, uh, I just want to hop in this thing and drive it across the country. Perfect road trip car. Um, this, the uh, the old custom cruisers, the Buick Estates, these were all, I think they were all built on the same platform, similar, similar body styles, engine options and whatnot, being all from GM. Give this one more rotation all the way around. It's got like a little spoiler up here. 400 cubic inch will do anything for some aerodynamics, right? Anything for fuel mileage. <laughs> yeah, the big chrome bumpers. I like I said in a in a previous video, anything 1990s or older, chrome is is a thumbs up from me. I like chrome on old cars. And our uh, lift ramps is stuck there. Okay, we are running pretty long on time here, so I think I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, again, we'll uh, let's bring all three of our castings out again. We'll line them up so we can get one more good look at them. So there's the 55 Nomad and the 76. Pontiac Le Mans and the 70 satellite. I'll move that back so we can get a good view of them. Can we focus on them? There we go. So yeah, that is the or my pieces of the Greenlight Estate Wagons series. So thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.